Hey guys, so this is a response to Matt Easton's video where he talks about whether or not training with a heavier weapon will make you faster when it comes to using a regular weapon or not. So there are an awful lot of things I agree with Matt on, there's a few things I'd like to expand on and give my own opinions on, and there's also one point which I do quite strongly uh, disagree with. Uh, so before I get on to that, I'll give you, give you a little background about myself. So I've been a HEMA practitioner for about four years now, competed in a few backswording tournaments, and yeah, definitely looking forward to doing more tournaments and that kind of thing in the future. Uh, I've also been uh, lifting for about five years now, and I'm also coaching England's strongest disabled woman in the seated category. Way to the top. So, um, yeah, I agree with Matt on an awful lot of what he said. Something I do disagree with, he references an article which draws the conclusion that no, using a heavy bat or sword for training isn't going to make you faster when it comes to using the regular weight one. And the reasoning is quite dubious for that. So he references uh, two scientific studies um, which seem to show that this isn't the case. However, they are testing something completely different to how you know, someone would actually be using a heavy piece of equipment to get faster with the regular weight one. What the study shows is that you take baseball players, and I'm sure my stance and grip and everything's completely wrong. Uh, I, don't care, I don't really give a shit, quite frankly. But you take some baseball players, you give them a regular weight bat, you have them swing it five times. Then you give them a heavy bat, you have them swing it five times. And then you give them the regular bat again, have them swing it five times. The second set with the lighter, uh, with the regular weight bats, they're going to think it's much. Uh, they're going to think it's much faster than the first set. But when the speed's actually measured, this turns out to simply not being uh, not being the case. The article calls that a placebo effect. Um, it's an illusion. It's not really a placebo effect. Uh, it's a minor nitpick. It's not really important. But what is important is. It's testing something completely different to how somebody would actually be using a heavy piece of equipment to get faster with the uh, regular regular equipment. It's completely different. There is a very, very big difference between that and somebody doing uh, sport-specific resistance training long-term for the sake of improving power, speed, uh, strength, or endurance. They are completely different things and the science is very, very clear on this topic. You know, if you're doing this sport-specific resistance training intelligently, it absolutely will improve all of those elements of athleticism. There's absolutely no debate about that, <laughs> that these days. Uh, that being said, you certainly have to take fatigue into the equation. Um, you know, if you're doing um, any kind of resistance training to the point where it interferes, with other aspects of your training, then of course it can have negative effects. But uh, you know that's not what we're talking about here. Uh, so yes, using an Indian club, I think will absolutely make you faster and more powerful when it with a regular sword. I really don't see how that's debatable. Now, what the article does show, which is very important is that using a heavier bat will make baseball players less accurate with the regu regular bat. And this will absolutely apply to HEMA as well. And I think the way to get around that is simply don't do any complex technique work with a heavy bat. Just focus on the gross motor patterns. So you can do those kind of motions. You can do these kind of motions. Maybe you can do some simple cutting patterns. Maybe you want to bring, maybe you want to bring the arm into it as well, and the shoulder or whatever. 
perhaps you want to do some of the more fatiguing guards, like a hanging guard, or maybe do a very exaggerated medium guard, so work on the shoulder and those muscles are there and that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, don't do any technique work with a heavy Indian club because that will make your technique worse. What essentially is going to happen is you're going to end up prioritising structure above absolutely everything else. And yes, structure is, of course, very, very important when it comes to HEMA, but it's not the only thing, thing which matters. So, for example, uh, I'm in a medium guard. Somebody thrusts at me uh, to my outside. I might want to push, push it out the way and have my sword lined up so I can thrust in afterwards. Uh, problem is, if I'm doing that with something very heavy, that is a horribly fatiguing position to be in. And what I'm going to find is that subconsciously, I'm going to be gradually bringing it into a structurally stronger position, which is simply wrong. Or perhaps I'm in a medium guard, and I find subconsciously I'm bringing it more into here, where it feels uh, more comfortable and uh, less straining. So, yeah, doing any kind of um, technique work is just going to go um, is just going to make you uh, worse in the long run, and the balance and the way it feels is going to be completely different. So, um, if I learn to have uh, very good point control with something like this. If I do lots of technique work with that, I'm going to find that I'm going to be horribly wonky when it comes to using the regular weapon. So, um, Matt mentions that historically there were people who had all sorts of different opinions. Some people said you should use the heavy one. Some people said you should be using the regular one. Some people even said you should be using the light one. So, who was right? All of them were right and all of them were wrong. Um, so like I've said, heavy one, brilliant for building up uh, certain aspects of athleticism and strength. Regular one for working on technique and sparring and that kind of thing. And the light one, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if you're doing lots and lots of training to the point where you're really pushing your ability to recover, you can get some extra volume in training with the uh, light weapon training just moving about and flowing and that kind of stuff I think is brilliant and even sparring you can spar for a very very long time without giving each other really horrible injuries and it's you're also going to learn to react quicker because you, know, you can move the weapon so much faster so I think that absolutely all of them have their place most people simply aren't going to be training hard enough to really take advantage of that. So for those people, I'd say just stick to the regular weight weapon. But if you're getting a lot of hours of training in during the week, by all means, train with all of them. They all have their place in training. So that's it for now. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in strength training to any degree, shape or form, and want to improve your strength for the purposes of HEMA, I've created a strength training for HEMA playlist down below, which I urge you to check out, and I will be adding to that playlist in the future. So thanks for watching, comment, rate, subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. As a quick addendum, I'd like to reply to some of the common arguments I've seen in the comment section of Matt's video. So I've seen a few people saying that training with heavy weapons can cause injury, and yeah, absolutely, training with the heavy weapons can cause injury. But you know what else can? Being weak. And if you're going into a high-intensity sparring situation and you're at a stage in your strength development where you actually find a regular sword to be quite heavy, um, you know, in that sort of chaotic environment, you're probably more likely to injure yourself than somebody who's uh, training with a heavy weapon but in a more controlled environment where they're just doing set numbers of sets and reps and doing movements which they're focusing very, very heavily on and don't have to deal with unexpected things happening, such as people attacking in different directions and all of that kind of thing. Uh, other people have said modern weight training is just as effective, so do that instead. And you should be doing, you should be doing, you know, modern weight training as well. You should be training with barbells and dumbbells and all of those kind of things to build general strength. 
but uh, the few things with, um, you know, this, most of the exercises you do in um, the gym, you don't really training those kind of motions that much. And a lot of strength comes down to training motor patterns, not simply building up the uh, muscles themselves. Uh, that's a very big element, but the motor patterns are also very important as well. So that's why I think that training of a heavy weapon is a good thing to do. And also some people referencing the study have talked about um, could you actually utilize the fact that people feel faster after training with a heavy weapon and then um, moving on to the light one? Um, possibly. It's an interesting idea. It'd be very interesting to actually test it. Uh, the thing is, it also makes your accuracy suffer and the effect is very short lived. So if it does have an effect, it probably isn't a very strong one uh, one way or the other.